working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Stevens government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Stevens. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with we broadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Working for You. Today we are honored to have, in our midst and on this show, two esteemed guests, stalwarts of the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College. We have Mr. Stuart Laplace, research and hydroponics scientist at CFBC, and Mr. Hugh Heiliger, economist and director of institutional development. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. Today, we will be discussing agriculture, technology, innovation in the area of hydroponics farming. Mr. Laplace has been working hard in this area and introducing hydroponics as an alternate form of farming with tremendous benefits for St. Kitts and Nevis. Today, we are going to find out about the benefits of this type of farming and how it can impact St. Kitts and Nevis in very positive ways. So I will start the ball rolling by turning to our scientist and researcher, <coughs> Mr. Laplace, and ask him to tell us a little bit about his work in this area of scientific farming. Mr. Laplace. The hydroponics is basically growing crops in non-nutrient rich media and we add nutrients to that media to enhance the productivity of the crops. There are various techniques that could be used in hydroponics. The one specifically geared towards the climate smart technique that we are using currently at the college and across the region is using a recycling technique that ensures that the nutrients are continuously circulated into the system to ensure that the plants have maximum access to the nutrients at all time. In doing so, we're able to not only predict when the crops are going to come to term, but also we ensure nutrient security by enhancing the formulation that the plants are fed with. Now, this technique is similar but different to the hydroponics that they do generally in the US and Europe and some of those um, countries in that we don't have all of the high-tech equipment and we don't have all the, um, the, the high science behind it. We have basically stripped it down and made it accessible to, to the everyday every man a woman in that um, regard so we have taken it out of the hands of the the scientists and we're now placing it in the hands of the, the normal man on the street mm -hmm. now we are using regular water so there is no water treatment or there is no um, reverse osmosis unit the water that we have here in in St. Kitts and most of the, the islands around here, we can drink it straight from the tap. And in doing so, it can be used <coughs> to feed these plants as the, the media of choice. So we don't have to enhance the water anyway. In addition, with this technique, it cuts down on the amount of time you spend farming, as you would have done traditionally, in terms of the manners that you're gonna put into it in terms of the 
labor intensiveness that also gets cut down. There's no weeding and you don't need any of those mechanical tools like the hose and the rake and the pick and all that type of stuff. It's also clean farming which brings into question the quality of the fruit that's being produced and the attractiveness as well. And that goes a long way, especially if you're trying to enter into a market where health is one of the, the major concerns that we have now. In addition to that, it's non-gender bias, so it can be done by male or female. You can also have persons who may be confined to a, a wheelchair, for instance, being able to um, benefit from, from such a technique. In fact, there is the Antigua Wheelchairs Association <coughs> who will be benefiting from one such system shortly where one will be set up at their location in Antigua and those persons with various disabilities would be enrolled in, in, in that project to do, to do farming. <coughs> we are also doing some work with OAS where they like the concept about the climate smart, the transferability, the implementation and getting persons, especially in rural areas who don't have access to a lot of um, resources and and transportation issues might be a concern as well where we can have these systems set up in remote locations where persons can can feed um, communities and also so this is one of the features as well of the the design also seasonality doesn't come into play here because we can produce at any time of the year and we also have reliability of supply which is one of the concerns that most of the the local vendors and retailers would have here in terms of making a commitment to, to the farm or the farming concepts as well as the environment comes into play now where we do not we don't discard anything to the environment, so we're not using any pesticides. We're not putting in. We're, we're not putting anything into the soil, so to speak. The only thing we discard would be the plants when they have come to term and you're, you're about to replant. And the media that we use, it's um, it's a media made of um, lava rock coated with clay, so it's it's um, fire hardened, so it's reusable mm -hmm. over and over again and that's the same media that that we're using to, to, to do the research over the years. So we are now past the, the research stage and we're now entering into implementation. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that across <coughs> the region. Okay, now you mentioned something about <coughs> one of the benefits of course of hydroponics farming is that it is non-gender bias. What do you mean by that? Are the other forms of farming well, gender bias? Well, traditionally, some, some would argue that farming could be very labor intensive. And traditionally, most of the farmers, uh, farmers generally would be, would be male. And they would normally dominate the sphere where agriculture is concerned. Now we have a level playing field where either are could um, benefit from this sort of farm. Okay, now hydroponics, Mr. Laplace, has been described as a climate smart approach to farming. <coughs> Could you explain what this means, especially in light of present day climatic conditions, especially in St. Kitts and Nevis and the Caribbean by extension? Well, that term climate smart was um, well, the system was given the name Climate Smart by UNESCO at a conference in 2013. <coughs> and I like the idea that the water is recycled and it's accounted for. So which means we, we, we have eliminated percolation, so there is no loss of water due to the soil. And we have minimized evaporation as well. Also, we could determine exactly how much water is being used by the plant. Now, Climate smart in the sense as well, where we have existing drought conditions and it's very difficult to have water, you know, just being mm -hmm. sprayed on the ground or dripped. 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of that water is lost because when you do that type of farming, technically only 30% of that water actually gets to the plant. Mm -hmm. The other 70% is lost through percolation, evaporation, etc. Now, in drought conditions, we can have a small amount of water and we can keep reusing it constantly. Now, because the plants are growing at a faster rate, they would come to term at a, at a quicker rate as mm -hmm. well. So which means you would not have to use as much water to get it to full term. So you're going to use a fraction of what you would normally use. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it cuts down on the <coughs> sort of helps, especially that we're having less rainfall. Or some people say it's not so much that we have a drought, but it's fact we have a catchment problem in terms of our water and how we conserve water and so on. And one can really go into those issues. Um, but nonetheless, you mentioned that it is one of the ways of farming that can basically mitigate in terms of um, when we have drought conditions. Right, it gives you a, a sense of accountability where the water is concerned. Mm -hmm. So you can keep a tab on exactly how much you're using and right. how much the plants themselves would require. Right. So you don't have to, to more or less waste the water. Right. It's more sustainable doing it like that. Sure. Now, Mr. Heiliger, you're an economist by training, and, and you also <coughs> are a lecturer. You've been a lecturer for many years at the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College teaching economics. And I want to ask you, how do you envisage this type of farming to benefit the economy? from your economist's perspective? Well, for one, uh, one thing that we, we have been doing, Stuart and myself, we're looking at our food import bill. How much we are, foreign exchange we are losing. But one of the things that we're also looking at is the whole issue you have all of this investment in hotels, in tourism. Are we going to then import all of the, the, the food to so And we're saying, no, because of this technology, one of the challenges that uh, previous ministers of tourism and agriculture, that the hotels and the restaurants were to any whole issue of reliability of supply. And as Stuart has indicated, we'll be dealing with this issue of reliability. And one of the things that we, we're trying to, to work with is with the, the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Tourism, Hotel and Tourism Association, the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Trade, Consumer Affairs, and the Chamber of Industry and Commerce on the college. We are, not, we are trying to take a, a multi-sectorical and integrated approach. We can meet and look at all of these, these challenges. Because what we are now saying is that using this new technology, we can then deal with the issue of reliability, quality control, and one of the, the, the beauty of this, use a shade house. <clears throat> and uh, I always argue, and recently I was in Grenada delivering a lecture. And one of the problems we got across the region is to attract young people into farming. We got to face, we are not going to get yes. them going in to mess up their hand in the soil and that kind of thing. The technology that, that Stuart has, uh, has perfected. In, in the shadows, when you pass across by the, the college, you'll see a little silver-looking yes. building. That is his scientific lab that he mm -hmm. used to do. And you, you, you produce on trestles. And so you don't have to bend over. You don't have to mess up in soil. And use a wire mesh. That anything goes about, it goes up. So it's easier to harvest. And we're looking at it multi-sectorial. One, a number of students who are doing ag science, they're doing it as a subject. But we are now saying, and working with the, the Ministry of Education, we can then use that as practical training instead of a subject. Students who might want to drop out at third form, we can introduce them in, into, the, into this area. We are already discussing with the, the Honorable Minister of Education. He's all excited about it. If we can put down a shade house at each one of these high schools, they grow up specific crops because we have looked at the crops which we are importing they are high priced. The schools get an income where you begin to get the students involved to understand they can become entrepreneurs. 
instead of going to look a job from somebody, they become their own employers. You develop cooperatives. Mm -hmm. They can go in the shadows early in the morning, in the afternoon, or whatever. So they control the time they're working. But the, the, the important thing is you're building capacity. So you, you are now producing, you're cutting down on the foreign exchange that, that you, you will lose. And one of the good things we are all saying, as part of the outreach, rehabilitation of prisoners, you can then begin to get them, you train them to build capacity. Because we know when they come, they have this thing where you went to jail. Yes. You can then enable them to become involved in cooperatives. The, the government is providing funds to development bank to assist entrepreneurs. During the training, which and Stuart probably will speak about mm -hmm. this, I mean, that is his baby. Yes. The, the, mm -hmm. the, the model developed to train these persons. So by the time they finish, they'll be coming out, they'll be earning while they're being trained. Mm -hmm. And so that they, they can then come out and you don't need no extensive amount of land, 5,000 square feet and these kind of things. And, you see, and you, you're then utilizing more and more persons producing different crops. Everyone is producing the same thing. And I guess Stuart will go into the different types of crops that you used to experiment with. And so we can have persons the defense force as part of their train. So by the time they, they, they're no longer in, they have a skill. They're producing, you can provide food to the, the school feeding program, to the hospitals, the card in home. This then will ensure that the cost to government can be decreased significantly and those funds can go into other areas of endeavor. The, the shade house, the technology, you know, the, the normal crops, a hurricane comes along, destroys all you have to do is to take down the shade of the of the frame. You will lose the crops in any case. But the technology enables you to rebound very, very quickly. So you don't have to go months. And so when we look at the these are some, some of the benefits. And this is all part of the whole diversification of the economy. You produce, you can export. Mm -hmm. And so this is something which we find can be attractive. I, I, I had some discussion with the Ministry of Education, a lot of the persons in the PEP program. This is you can provide them with skills. They become independent persons, no longer depending on government or somebody to give them a job. You got the institution, development bank, work with them during the training, so you know they have the particular skills. But you have to control the importation, and this is where we're talking about this integrated approach with the different agencies. And we are convinced that the argument which was used in the past about the availability and the quality of this and that and that, and as Stuart pointed out, we enjoy conditions. You're, rec you're recycling the water with nutrients and you control how the crop is grown, how long it takes, and it is something that individuals who have enough land can also be coming and you earn additional income. But we are feeding the persons who are coming in all these hotels. And one of the things that Stuart and I have been, well, we are now looking at a model which we are going to present to the college. Put down three, 5,000 square foot shade houses. Mm -hmm. And we estimate that the college can make over half a million dollars conservatively. You have a management team in place, profits are over half a million dollars annually. So these are ways and means the schools can earn. Individuals. You know, and one of the things that's true to me, and here is it, they were transferring the technology. He went to Guyana and West I mean, they say, hey, we, we, we develop it here. So this is one of the areas we feel that are the whole transformation of the economy. You use, and I, I, I was heartened in the, the New Year's address by the Prime Minister when he was talking about using the new technology in agriculture. CFBC has developed that new technology. Our scientist, Mr. Laplace, mm -hmm. and he has already started to work with local persons, individuals who have extra land, and you know, they can just contact Mr. Laplace and we, we have it here. Now, you.
what you have said certainly <coughs> sounds economically um, viable in terms of making the various links. Yep. Agriculture, tourism, education, um, rehabilitation, and so on. Um, and I think that from what you have said, that it can work. But Stuart, I want to ask you, um, what are some of the crops that will be grown using this form of technology? Now, the traditional form of technology, with crops you have a multiplicity of problems. You have a lot of pesticides being used, insecticides. You have the monkey problem. Some people claim we should be going into monkey business, but <laughs> you know, maybe you can explain monkey a little bit to idea. us. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like anything else, with, when it comes to pests, it, it, it comes down to proper um, greenhouse management, and it also comes around to the way the ex extremities of the greenhouse is, is being kept. And whether you're still doing soil farming and a hydroponic farm, or you have disease, transfer etc but in terms of the crops that we have grown um, anything above ground we have grown over the last um, eight years so from strawberries all the way to corn and the cup so you have your lettuce your peppers your tomatoes cucumbers eggplants okras cauliflower broccoli cabbage kale, kale yeah beans so we have experimented with all those um, together individually we had mix and match with a few varieties just to determine the um, com competitiveness between species and also compatibility so these are short-term crops some short-term and some you could extend long-term like the peppers mm -hmm. for instance right you could have season peppers extending up to a year mm -hmm. in, the, in the system. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Hyler, you mentioned something about if a hurricane comes, <coughs> yeah. um, you know, these crops that are growing in the shade house houses can rebound quickly. Yeah. But isn't there any way of protecting the shade house from the ravages of a hurricane in terms of putting something over it or anything like that? No? Well, the short is, you can't. You can. You'll have to take over, take off the covering. You have to take it off. Mm -hmm. So you won't lose that. You okay. take it off, the hurricane passes, the frame is up, pass, you just put that covering on. Okay. Yeah, the average growth time for, for the crops is around 40 days. 40 days. Yeah. From, okay. from the seed. So it gives you a significant um, <coughs> chance to put food back on the shelf mm -hmm. in quick order. Mm -hmm. Now, Stuart, all of this sounds very good but i want to ask you how do you plan to sell this this new method of farming to say it is new mm -hmm. and of course you know people sometimes are not very willing to undergo change we've had the traditional form of farming for a very very long time hydroponics now is something that is new i'm um, including the science and the technology so how do you plan to sell it what links you hope to establish and so on. Well, it has to be a paradigm shift. I mean, we have to start with education, first of all. We need to start from the ground up. And we need to start in, in schools because these would be the, the persons coming forward who will be taking over mm -hmm. and, and maintaining the society. So it's going to be difficult to change persons already into the, the old habits. But the, the younger minds are easier to mold and if persons have a better understanding of what what is all mm -hmm. about how plants actually grow and and get down into some of those um, basics. Mm -hmm. I think persons would have a, a, a better appreciation, especially mm -hmm. where quality and safety and reliability is, is concerned. Mm -hmm. Now most of the islands across the, the regions are already sold okay so we have a lot of collaborations with a, a lot of islands mm -hmm. we also have collaborations with, with with countries as well so we and have institutions. an institution so we have 
Yudoblai, for instance, in Trinidad, they are sold on the idea. And actually, they need a, a model on their campus. Where they did one at Nawi in Guyana, the Samuel Chapman Prescott Polytechnic. Polytechnic. They are also getting one in, in May. Mm -hmm. And we're going to the sister island of Nevis mm -hmm. next month to be specific. <coughs> And we are also going to be putting on one day to do some training and, and awareness as part of the implementation project on the OAS. We still have a, a project pending in, in Haiti, University of Notre, Notre Dame. So it's, it's moving through the region. But as I said, here, how everybody knows hydroponics is, the way hydroponics was given or perceived. And as I said, it, it, it looks very expensive, it looks very high tech, so it's more of a deterrent than an encouragement. So when you first hear hydroponics, you're thinking about it like mm -hmm. hydroponics, like the way it's done as a status quo, not mm -hmm. this new technique, which is climate smart. Mm -hmm. Because what's, what's really going on is that in North America and Europe, they are recreating the environment that we have, the environment is already here, we live here. So all we're doing is putting a few pieces together and we have the environment yes. complementing the, the design. So, so, so we are perfectly placed. Right, so this type of farming is very attractive to young people. Yes, mm -hmm. very much so. Young people don't want to get their hands dirty. So you, spend, you also spend a... And they don't see yes, the traditional form of um, farming as economically viable. Right. You spend less time doing this type of farming really. You only need to do a few checks morning and, and evenings and you have the rest of the day to do whatever. Uh -huh. So it's not like you're deer looking at the crops for the, for the entire day. So it's time efficient? Very, very much so. Mm -hmm. Because I have a I have system on right now, I have another one that I'm looking after and sometimes days. System is running, we don't mm -hmm. even know. Okay. 